All right, good deal. Okay, so, all right, we're going to be talking about peace, my inheritance. And so if you would, go with me to John, St. John, the book of St. John, uh, the 14th chapter, and uh, verse 27 is where we're going to be tonight. We'll read it again in the King James Version, and uh, we're talking about peace. Uh, but I must tell you that not just, just the fact that you need some peace. No, not that. No, no, no. It's deeper than that. Uh, we're talking about peace, my inheritance. So it's deeper than just you needing peace, y'all. And so I want to make sure that you understand that. And so we're really going to go over this because uh, this should be highly demanded in the lives of every believer right now. This should be uh, highly demanded in the lives of every believer right now. It should be. I did say it should be, y'all. <laughs> it should be something uh, that's happening in the lives of every believer. There's a lot of confusion in the world right now. There's a lot of uh, stress in the world right now. Uh, a lot going on, uh, not just because of the pandemic, uh, but the pandemic has been the center of all of the uh, chaos and all of the confusion. A lot of people wondering if you're being lied to. You, you're wondering if, uh, let me make sure y'all, I got this all the way up here so y'all can hear me good. All right, so you, you, you're wondering if you're being lied to. You're wondering, uh, uh, you know, if you're being told the truth, we don't we don't know what's going on, but it's a lot. And so the spirit of division, uh, like never before. And, and, and so in the middle of all of the ordered chaos, I want y'all really quickly, uh, before we go to John 14, 27, somebody go to James 3 and uh, read verse 16. I want somebody to read that. that, that that's something I, I want you to read really quickly. Somebody located in the book of James. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 16. I want somebody to read that. Uh, I, that just jumped out at me right now. Uh, and I want somebody to read that for me. For where envy and strive is, there is confusion and every evil work. Oh, wow. Okay. Think about that, y'all. So think about that for, for where there is envy and strife. There is confusion in every evil work. And so, again, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of things going on. In the middle of all of that, there should be a high demand for true peace. There should be a high demand for true peace. And that's where we are. And the only way you're going to experience true peace is through your inheritance. I better say that again. The only way you're going to experience true peace is through your inheritance. So let's begin. Uh, and so I want to just lay this out for you tonight. And so let's start at verse 27. And again, that is St. John, the 14th chapter. And this is Jesus speaking here, y'all. And so I want to make sure that we're clear on that. And so those of you that have a Bible there, you should be able to see that it's in red. So give me a reader on that, uh, Shonda, if you would, there in King James. And so let's, let's look at that. Verse 27 is where we are. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. All right, thank you so much for that. Now look what he says, y'all. Look at what she just read. It's very important. Uh, very, very important. Peace I leave with you. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, it's my peace. He's clearly telling them. He's talking to his disciples, y'all. And so we are that 13th disciple that he's talking to. He says, uh, nah, look what he's saying. Peace I leave with you. It's my peace. Peace I leave with you. He said, it's my peace I give unto you. 
It's my peace I give unto you. Peace I leave with you as your inheritance. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Isn't that interesting that he specifies, he specifically says, the peace that I give is not as the world giveth. So we're not talking about worldly peace. We're not talking about worldly peace tonight. We're talking about peace that comes by being, literally, y'all, by being in Jesus, in Jesus Christ, okay? So we're talking about the peace that comes by being in relationship with Jesus. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Then he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hmm. So he says, I give you peace. So you won't let your heart be troubled. Look how he put it. He said, let not your heart be troubled, Neither let it be afraid, but clearly we need peace in order for that to happen. We need his peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world give. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So he says, I give you peace so you won't let your heart be troubled. I give you peace so you won't be afraid. So what we have to do, y'all, what's very important for every one of us to do is take possession of our inheritance. How do we, how do you and I take possession of our inheritance? How do we do that? How do we take possession? Well, let me tell you, it is by faith, by faith. So by faith. I take possession of the peace that is mine as an inheritance. By faith, I take possession of the peace that is mine as an inheritance. The world cannot give it, and the world cannot take it away. The world cannot give it, and the world cannot take it away. So there's a clear distinction. The world cannot give this peace. There's a clear distinction between the inheritance of peace that comes from Jesus and what the world calls peace. He says, so, so, so since you have this inheritance, peace that comes by Jesus, don't be troubled. Somebody need to hear that tonight. So since you have this inheritance, peace that came by Jesus, don't be afraid. So here's my way out of trouble. Here's my way out of being afraid. You got a lot of believers operating in fear. You got a lot of believers who's walking around afraid or troubled. But here is my way out. Receive the inheritance. Peace. Receive my inheritance. Peace. If you have felt afraid, I know some of you have, you, you have felt troubled. He says right here, we're in John chapter 14 and verse 27, for those of you that have joined in, if you have felt afraid or have felt troubled, he says, here's your way out. Receive by faith the inheritance, peace. So right where you are, I want you to say this. Say this out loud. Right where you are, say, I receive by faith my inheritance, peace. I receive by faith my inheritance, 
peace. Amen. So that's where it starts, y'all, with your faith. That's where it starts, with your faith. And so, all right, everybody got that. All right, y'all got thumbs up? I want to make sure you got that. So that's where it starts. So, so I receive by faith my inheritance, peace. I receive by faith my inheritance, peace. All right, that's very, very important. Very important. Very, very important that you got that. I receive by faith my inheritance, peace. All right, now go over to John 16. Stay in the book of St. John. We're in St. John, St. John 16. Go over to verse 33. I want to share a few scriptures with you first. And, then, um, and so Jesus leads us in inheritance. Very important that we understand that. Peace. But if we don't take possession of that inheritance by faith, then it's like anything else. If you if they think about this here, if you got money in the bank, I love to try to use these analogies so we can understand that from this standpoint. If, if, if you got money in the bank and you don't take possession of that money that's in the bank, if you never ever claim that money, it, then you'll live like a poor person, like you don't have the money. If you never take possession of the money, it's the same way if somebody writes you a check, but you never cash it. You just keep the check, put it in your wallet. You never cash it. You don't take a picture of it. You don't, you don't do nothing with it, but just, just hold it. But you never take possession. You never appropriate what's been given to you. And so I want you to understand that. And so it'll do you no good if you don't use it. You don't appropriate what's been given to you, all right? And so look at, go with us again, John 16 and verse 33. And you're you're familiar with this passage of scripture, but I want I want I want I want somebody to read that for me. Read verse thirty three for me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Okay, in hold on, world? right there, right there. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because that's that's too that's too heavy, y'all. That's too heavy. Look how he starts verse thirty three. These things I have spoken unto you. Listen, he's already recapping everything. He's letting them know these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. So he says you find peace in him. In Jesus, you might have peace. So he says, read on. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So he says in the world, you shall have trouble. You shall have tribulation. You will have tribulation. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying tonight. Very important that we understand what's happening. They that live godly shall suffer persecution. Okay? You're not going to be able to live in this world and not face tribulation. Mm, I know y'all thought that uh, once you got saved, you wouldn't be facing tribulation and persecution and trouble. But this is the word of God. John 16, verse 33. He lets us know that we will, in this world, we will have tribulation. We will have trouble. In this world, you will have persecution. But he says, be of good cheer. Woo. I'm sorry, y'all. I got a little happy right there thinking about that. Be of good cheer. Why? Why? Why should we be of good cheer as believers, as believers in Christ? Why should we be of good cheer? Notice what the rest of that verse says. He says, Mm, 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 mm. He says, because I have overcame the world, we find peace in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, we find peace in him. And so this kind of peace, y'all, is, is you will not find anywhere else but in Christ Jesus. Nowhere else but in him. And so tonight, again, we're talking about peace. 
my inheritance. I'm taking possession of what's been given to me. I'm appropriating what's been released in my life. Hallelujah. Stay where we are in St. John. I want to show you another verse. Go to the 20th chapter. And I want to go slowly. Again, we're talking about peace. And so we as believers should be experiencing peace even right now. Very important. And so before we end this lesson tonight, I believe you're going to understand it. You're going to appropriate it. You're going to take possession of peace in your life. It is yours. It belongs to you. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. It belongs to you. Peace is yours. You don't even have to ask for it. You just need to take possession. Peace is yours. My peace, I leave with you. Go to John 20. And uh, I want to look at a few verses there in, in the book of uh, St. John chapter 20. Let's, look, let's start at verse 19. And I want y'all to watch this here. Watch this very, very closely. This is happening after, this is after Jesus has been crucified, dead and buried. And then uh, they said that the door was shut. So that's where we are right now in verse 19 of St. John chapter 20. So read verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, or the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and said unto them. Uh huh. And so he stood in the midst. Again, this is after the crucifixion. This is after he died and, and was buried. And then look what he's saying. Now he stood at the door. The door was shut, and Jesus came. The door being shut, and he said something to them. Look what he tells the disciple. This is after. Okay, listen. Listen to what he says. Jesus, and Jesus stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. The door is shut. They're thinking that Jesus is dead for good. Y'all look at this. Look at this. Jesus is raised from the dead. He walks through the door, the door being shut. And here's what he said. And once he showed up in the room, he said, peace be unto you. So this is the this is next level, y'all. I believe you're going to grab it. Y'all lean in. I think you'll grab this here, what I'm getting ready to tell you tonight. What I'm getting ready to tell you. When I, I, I looked at that, I saw something. He told them, he stepped into the room, he said, peace be unto you. So that tells me that I have to equate peace with Jesus. I equate peace with Jesus. So when Jesus showed up, peace showed up. When Jesus showed up, peace showed up. That, that's interesting that he said, peace be unto you, that he put that right back out there for them. And so when Jesus showed up, Peace showed up. I got a question for you tonight. Is Jesus showing up in your life? Are you allowing him to show up in your situations? Are you allowing him to show up in your circumstances? Are you allowing Jesus, are you allowing peace to show up in your everyday living? Because when Jesus shows up, Peace shows up. And as you begin to have a relationship with him, as you begin to have a relationship with the word, the living word, as you begin to have a relationship in your prayer time, when Jesus shows up, peace shows up. Skip down to verse 21 right there. Let's look at that. When you look at verse 21, go there really quickly. Stay in chapter 20. Uh, go down to verse 21. Read, 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 read. Then said Jesus to them again. Wait a minute. He said it to them what? Again. He said it to them what? Again. Again. Notice Jesus is very patient, y'all. Jesus says, you know what? I need to make sure that you're clear. And so I'm saying it to you again. Notice what Jesus is saying to them again. He said it again. Not only in verse 19, he says it again in verse 21. Read. Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. All right, thank you, Jesus. And so uh, uh, Jesus said, peace be unto you. 
He's trying to get them to get it, y'all. Why would Jesus spend so much time right here from verse 19 to verse 21 telling them the exact same thing? These are his boys. These are his disciples. And he's got to reiterate to them, peace be unto you. And so he's trying to get them to get it. I'm, I'm peace. I'm the inheritance. Peace be unto you. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get peace. Go to verse 26. Skip down. Look, notice what happens again, y'all, in verse 26. Go down to verse 26. Read. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Jesus is so serious about this peace that he, he says it to his disciples. They get it for the third time, but Thomas is getting it for the first time. But the other, the other disciples have gotten it and they're getting it again. And, they're, and, and Jesus is making sure that they understand that peace belongs to them. This inheritance peace is unto you. Peace be unto you. It's very important that you understand no matter what's going on in this world, no matter what's going on in society, peace belongs to you. Peace is your inheritance. We have peace today. You can't find peace in your material possessions. You better stop trying to get peace in your material possessions. You can't find peace in your friends. You cannot find peace in the stock market. You can't find peace in this world. No, the only place you're going to be able to find true peace is in Jesus. Hallelujah. That's where you get true peace. And peace belongs to you. It belongs to you. So, 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 so now let me go a little bit further. So what is peace? <laughs> Hallelujah. I figured I better talk to you a little bit tonight. What is peace? I want to teach this man. I want to walk slowly. Well, let me tell you this here. Let's talk about what is not. Peace is not. I'm going to tell you something here so you can understand. It. Peace is not an absence of trouble in your life. It is not an absence of trouble in your life. You see, the world thinks, this is, what, this is the way the world thinks. The world thinks, well, I have peace because I don't have trouble in my life. That's the way the world thinks, y'all. And, and the Bible warns us. He, the Bible warns us. He says in this world, you'll have tribulation. We just saw that in John 16 and 33. The Bible warns us that they that live godly shall suffer persecution. So peace is not the absence of trouble. It is, it is possible to be in the midst of the biggest crisis of your life and still experience peace. I better say that again. It is possible to be in the middle, in the midst of the biggest crisis in your life and still experience peace. Why is that? Why can you still be in the middle of a crisis and still experience peace? Because we have Jesus in the midst of the biggest crisis in our life. That's the great thing about it. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. Because you have Jesus, you have peace. Peace in the middle of it all. Very important that you understand. And so look, go, go to Philippians. Let's go over here. Let's go to Philippians 4. Very familiar passage of scripture again. And so... This is Bible teaching. I want y'all to see these words and I want you to see these scriptures, locate them and be able to, to meditate on these verses. But, but I need you to understand that peace is your inheritance. It is your inheritance. And so go to uh, Philippians 4 and verse 7 is what we're going to read first. And so, so peace, remember this here, it is not the absence of trouble. I got to make sure you got that. It is not the absence of trouble. It's the presence of Jesus in your life. And that's very important. Very important. All right. 
Okay, verse 7, read. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, let's break that verse down, y'all. Let's break it. Let's break it down. Let's read it in, let's read it in increments there. So, and the peace of God, think about that. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Notice what the peace of God does. It shall keep your heart. And it'll keep your mind. But how does it keep it? Somebody tell me. Give me give, somebody tell me. How does it keep your heart and keep your mind? Only through Christ Jesus. Okay, all right. Everybody saw that? Only through Christ Jesus. So in the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Okay, so we see that the peace of God, which passes all understanding. This is now, look what happens. Notice what the peace of God does. Okay, listen, let me back up. And the peace of God, now the very next part after the peace of God, you got to listen to this part, which passes all understanding. Woo, y'all, stop trying to understand it. It passes all understanding. Listen to that part. It's very important that you hear that. See, you're trying to understand it. It passes all understanding. Then it tells you what the peace of God does. The next part of that verse says, uh, shall keep your hearts, and it shall keep your mind. But how? Through Christ Jesus. So listen, it's very, so, so, so everybody got this. Please tell me you got this verse, verse 7. You understand it. You're crystal clear on how it's broken down. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Stop trying to get the knowledge on understanding what the peace of God is. I need you to be clear. It pass all understanding. And then it tells you what it does. It shall keep your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Again, this is Philippians 4 and verse 7, uh, chapter 4 and verse 7. So it's through Christ Jesus that you will find the peace that will keep your heart and keep your mind. Ooh. Somebody ought to hear what I'm saying. Ooh, that, that, that's, that's tough right there. That's a good one. So it's through Christ Jesus, through Yeshua. Listen to what I'm saying. Through the Messiah that you will find the peace that will keep your heart and keep your mind. It's that relationship with Jesus, y'all. That relationship with this word, with the living word, that relationship in prayer that will keep your heart in your mind. I believe somebody got that. Somebody got that. In the beginning was the word. Hallelujah. The word was with God. In the word was God. In the word became flesh. So God in his word, hallelujah, and the word became flesh, Jesus. So listen there, they're the same, y'all. They're, they're understanding the Trinity, y'all, understanding who Jesus is. That's where we find peace. Elohim, that's where we find peace tonight. When you come home and you hear bad news and you and you get into the word of God and you talk to Yeshua and, and you rely on him and you think of his love for us, that's where you find peace. And he says, that will keep your mind and that will keep your heart. It's the peace that, the peace that comes from God that passes all understanding. Let's go deeper, y'all. Let's go a little bit deeper. Go over to Colossians chapter three. And I want to read one verse over there and it's very similar to the uh, Philippians four and seven, but I want you to see this. Just like, I'm going to take it a step further. Uh, Colossians uh, chapter three and verse uh, 15 is where we are tonight. So again, we're talking about peace, my inheritance. And so very important in times like these that we understand how to live in peace. Oh, y'all will hear what I'm saying tonight. Understand how to live in peace and be at peace within. Okay, so I'm going to break it down. Colossians 3 and 15. Somebody read that for me. 
and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. All right. Uh, so, so know what it said. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. There's another translation. It's the Amplified. It says, let the peace of God rule in your heart like an umpire. Think about that. An umpire calls. Think about in baseball and softball. There's an umpire. He calls it safe. He calls it out. Think about that. And so the peace of God rule in your heart like an umpire. He calls it safe and he calls it out. Let the peace of God rule in your heart as an umpire. He says, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. To the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. We've got to learn how to live our lives in a loud the peace of God to begin to guide our lives. Where there is no peace, then you probably don't have the confirmation that you need to move forward with that thing. Okay, hear what I'm saying? God's not involved. God is not giving you the go-ahead if you don't have peace. This is very important. But where there is peace, you may want to consider, well, maybe God's involved in this thing right here. Mm -hmm. Peace can be like a guide, y'all. It's a guide. It's like a guide. It can be like an umpire. You meet somebody. Think about this here. You meet somebody and you consider being with them, marrying them, and you've never had peace about it. I can tell you the umpire is saying it's not safe. You meet somebody and then there, there's been this, uh, the, the peace of God over your life and, and over uh, the relationship and it's just, just kind of uh, been a peaceful thing. The umpire is saying it's safe. And so very important. So we will do ourselves a favor. <laughs> Hello, somebody if we'll begin to pay attention to the umpire of peace. Let peace rule in your heart. So the question I'm asking right now is peace ruling in your heart? Is peace ruling in your heart? And so I want y'all to be paying attention when you get involved in business, when you get involved in relationships, when you get involved in, in a plan or, or you get involved in some things and you don't have any peace, I want you to let the umpire decide. You don't have to know why. Not having peace is enough, y'all. Isn't it interesting how we just let something just continue to to just cause unrest on us. So you need to really think about it. You don't have to know why. You just need to know that you don't have peace about it. When you don't have peace about it, that gives you enough to not move forward with it. You, 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 you'll find out why later. But let peace rule. And if peace is not ruling, you might want to cancel whatever it is you're about to get engaged in. You want peace to begin to rule in your heart as an umpire. Hallelujah. Very important that you understand. So let peace begin to rule in your heart as an umpire. And when you allow peace to really rule, think about this here. It does not make sense, y'all, for you to feel completely at rest <laughs> and at peace when you are in a dire straits. But I must say, supernaturally, you can be filled with peace. You can be filled with peace, supernaturally. Yes, absolutely. 
So let me deal with this, the way the world defines peace, y'all. Let me tell you this really quickly. So the world defines peace as harmony. The world defines peace as tranquility based on what is happening in the sensory realm. And so uh, in the world defines peace based on your comfort. But I must tell y'all, we can have peace because we're in Jesus, we're in Christ, even when we're not comfortable. Mm. We can have peace in Christ, even when we don't have the harmony or the tranquility. That's the way, that's the way the world is defining it. So if it's not happening right in the in this sense. In this natural realm, then you don't have any peace. That's the way the world is defining that. And that's a powerful thing, y'all. When they're walking around with no peace, we have peace because of our inheritance. We have peace. It is our inheritance. When they can only have peace when things are comfortable, uh -oh. uh, when they can only have peace when, when things are, 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 are really working uh, in their favor, we can have peace in the midst of things that are not comfortable. We can have peace in the midst of tribulation. It's our experience with Jesus that allows that to happen. Very, very important. And so it does not mean, I said this earlier, that we won't witness uh, what is going on or feel what is going on, but Jesus can touch what you are feeling inside. Think about this here. And then he can turn that turmoil into peace. That's why the Bible says men should always pray and not faint. Emotions react in a negative way. Y'all got to be careful about your emotions. But I just want you to understand, Jesus can touch those feelings on the inside and, and he can turn that turmoil that's on the inside of you into peace. I don't know if you fully understand what I'm saying when I say that. But but think about it, you know, because when, when, when things are going on, you kind of get nervous on the inside. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and, and you immediately, uh, you, you're dealing with something. But when you go to Jesus, isn't it interesting how calm you get after you release that in prayer, after you uh, come to in, in prayer about a situation? You invite his word into that situation. He turns that turmoil. He turns the confusion and he turns it into peace. That's what I'm talking about. That's something that you cannot get from the world. Think about it. You experience the death of a loved one when you when you would think you would be all, all over the place, but he touches those feelings on the inside and he turns it into peace, not knowing how to deal with particular bill and lack and uh, how you, you you actually went in prayer and he turned it into peace. So let me tell you something, something I learned that, that I've learned about peace is transformation is always from the inside out, not from the outside in. Think about that. It's always from the inside out and not from the outside in. The world their peace starts on the outside and then try to come, to come in. But those of us who see our peace in Christ, that transformation takes place from the inside out. I want you to go, go to Psalms 29. I want to read my wife's favorite scripture tonight, y'all. Uh, look at Psalm 29. In verse, uh, verse 11, I want you to see this because the Lord will give strength to his people. I want y'all to understand, again, peace does not mean the absence of trouble. But go with me to Psalm 29 and verse 11. God will give strength to his people. He will bless his people with peace, with holiness, with shalom. Read verse 11 for me, Psalm 29, verse 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Notice what it says. The Lord will bless his people with what? Peace. 
with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. That word blessed right there means empowered to have success. The Lord will empower his people, hallelujah, to have success with peace. Hallelujah. And there it is again. You have to use your faith to take possession of it. When, you when we do these studies, y'all, when we in this word like we are tonight, you have to use your faith to take possession of what's been provided for you, what's been given to you. This is your inheritance. You have to take possession. You have to take possession of what's been given to you. And so God will empower us to have success. So Jesus gives us peace, y'all. Jesus gives us security. He gives us covering. He gives us protection, even in the midst of the storm. And so all of these synonyms, y'all, of peace. And so you're dealing with security and all of this stuff here. So, so that's, what, that's what he's doing for us. It's a covering from all of the things that might be happening. Go to Psalm 91, very familiar passage of scripture. I want to show you. I, want, I, I, I know you know it. You know it, but I want you to read it. I want you, I want to break it down like we did Philippians 4. I want to break this verse down. Uh, Psalm 91 and verse 1. Uh, I want you to see this really quickly. We are covered. Somebody say that out loud. We are covered. Yes. Uh, he got us. He got us covered. And by knowing this and by understanding that you're covered, and listen, I hope you hear me when I say this. Things have been made available, but you have to take possession of it. I said this at least four or five times. You have to take possession of it. That means you got to grab it. You got to speak it. You got to think it. You got to let it come. You got to let it get settled on the inside of you, y'all, that you take possession. That's your faith. That's your faith that says, I believe it. I receive it. I live in it. I walk in it. This is my life. Hallelujah. That's your faith that says I'm going to meditate on it uh, until it is on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Look at verse 1. Read, read, read verse 1, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, that's your covering right there, y'all. That is your covering. Think about that. That is your covering. We're covered with the shadow of the almighty God. We are covered with the shadow of Elohim. We understand that he shall cover you. Read verse four. Go down to verse four. Read that. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Let's read that. Verse four. He shall cover thee with his feathers and, of, and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. It's very important that we understand the word, y'all, that we know the word of God. We got to know what's been given to us. He's got us. God's got us covered, y'all. It's very important. He's got you under his protection. Uh, this is a witness protection program, y'all. We are in the program. He's got us covered. God's got you under security. He's got you under his security. And Listen, people will not understand. They would not be able to understand why in the midst of a hard time, you look like you're at peace. People can't understand it. You know people looking at you funny right now. People wondering why you're not going crazy. Why you're not panicking. Why are you not tripping out? It's because, first of all, you know that you have the peace of God. That's why. And so I'm so grateful that we have that. We understand that. You have Jesus' peace, which means you have successful peace. You, and just by knowing that brings a calmness. <laughs> this brings a calmness. Just brings an ease over you. Think about it. And it does not matter. This, this is what's interesting. It does not matter what circumstances may be raging around you. I love how we can cry out to the Father for his unmerited favor. David did it. David did it, y'all. We can cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for your unmerited divine favor. That's on my life. Thank you for that. 
every time something weird comes up, something comes up, you know, just like it did this past week, y'all, just something out of the blue, something comes up, unexpected thing. Just imagine is that immediately you can go to God, immediately you can go to God and cry out unto him. I love what David did in uh, Psalm 57 in verse 1. Put that up. Put that up there, somebody. Psalm 57 in verse 1. This blessed me, y'all, I, I, because this is just really spoke to my spirit. And, and I love how David just said, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. That's Psalm 57 and 1. I love that. He said, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Ah, hallelujah. Yeah, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. Mm, 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 mm. No, I, I need y'all to locate Psalm 57 and 1. I don't want to just quote it. I need you to locate it. Give me a read on that. I, I, the last part is what's going to bless you. The last part of Psalm 57 and verse 1. Read that whole verse for me, somebody. Psalm 57, verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusts in thee. Yeah, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Oh, my God. That's in the word of God, y'all, right there. That's in the word of God. David is saying, uh, listen to what that last part, what he says. He said, in the shadow of thy wings, Will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed? All David is saying here, in the midst of calamities, find peace, find that covering, find that protection, find that security in the midst of turmoil until all this stuff passes. And even in the midst of what's going on, I've had to find, I've had to cry before the Lord, before the Most High God. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me, oh God. I have to see myself in his peace. Oh God, that don't mean stuff ain't going on. Y'all, we ain't, we ain't got our head in the sand. We know stuff is going on, but, but I have to see myself in his peace that all is well. All is fine. All is well. And, and I have to open my mouth, y'all. Some of y'all need to open your mouth and make some confessions every day because what I am doing is I'm setting things in motion. I'm laboring to stay at peace. Very important. I'm laboring to stay at peace, stay in peace. I'm covered by his security. So I take my mind and I begin to speak it out my mouth and understand whose I am. Even when destruction is all around us, we can take refuge in the Lord. That's the thing, y'all. God is our refuge. The Most High is our refuge in our fortress, y'all. And so where do you go when your peace is under attack? Come on, somebody. Where do you go when your peace is under attack? Let's not go like the world. Let's not go to killing. Let's not go to stealing. Let's not go to fighting and cussing and fussing. Where do you go when your life is under attack? Where do you go when the fear uh, come knocking on the door? I go to the rock, y'all. I go to the rock. I'm just keeping it real to you. I go to the rock. I know it looks like ain't nothing going on in my life, but it is. But guess what? I go to the rock. The rock is Jesus. I go to him. He's where I end up, y'all. I have to go to him. I don't go to the world to try to get some answers about something that uh, it's ordered chaos. I go to the rock. And I'm not going to allow this fear to take over my life. When he has given me, my inheritance is peace. So when destruction is all around us, we can take refuge. This is blessing somebody tonight. Thank you, Father. Uh, it's kind of like when it's raining. Are you going to go stand in the rain or are you going to get an umbrella? Are you going to take refuge? When it rains, find refuge, find protection, security, peace. But you got to decide. It's not going to be forced upon you. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all need to change your habits. 
Start your day off with Jesus and stop starting your day off with the news. It's all right to get a little information. I ain't, I ain't knocking that. I'm just saying, if you start your day with all that bad news, instead of starting your day with Jesus, you're going to feel the impact of that throughout the day. Think about it. It's going to be with you. You're going to be thinking about things. It's going to be occupying your mind. But start your day with Jesus. Start practicing his presence. Acknowledging him. Committing your plans to him. Trusting him for his unmerited favor. Trusting him for his wisdom and strength for the day. I want you to know a secret. You can have some great success no matter what's going on. I've seen, I've seen not only our ministry prosper in the middle of a mess, <laughs> and I did say a mess, in the middle of a mess, yes. I've seen people uh, prosper. I've seen relationships come back together. I've seen children get back with their parents. I mean, I've seen things happen in the middle of a mess. And so I'm telling you, you can lay around all day long listening to 24-hour bad news. Or you can take advantage of, uh, uh, of getting in the presence of Jesus, seriously. Getting in his word, getting in his presence, spending time in prayer. We offer prayer every day of the week. We get in prayer every day of the week. Spending time in praise. Get your own praise party going. You ain't got to wait nobody. Wait on nobody. Get your own praise party going. Y'all know you can get Spotify. You can get YouTube. All of this here. And you can get your praise party going on. Hallelujah. Ready to write down some instruction. What the Lord gives you. Write it down. Some of y'all need to learn to be a writer. Even write now. Oh God, I speak it over your life. Learn to be a writer. Write down the instructions that that, that comes from him through your solitude. And you can actually get promoted just by you doing what thus said the Lord. And so I want you to understand that you don't have to wait until change comes. You make the change. Hallelujah. And so some of y'all need to get a Jesus update versus the latest virus and, and the latest world update. Get a Jesus update. Find out what he says about your life. Find out what he says about today, what he says about your tomorrow. Find out what he says. Y'all, I got a scripture for you, and I'm about to get ready to get out of here. Go to Psalm 127. Woo, this is going to bless you. It blessed me, y'all. I got to get you this verse. Because it spoke to me. I believe it's going to speak to you. Y'all stay put. Don't nobody get off of here. I need you to hear this verse tonight. Go to Psalms 127 and verse 2. Let's look at this here. Right here. Look at it very closely. Look at what's happening, y'all. This is what the Lord gave me to share with you. This is a deep, uh, uh, this is a deep study right here. But this is where you're going to get clarity tonight. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants us to be ineffective and unproductive. But I'm decreeing and declare victory over your life. Peace in your life. Peace in your marriage. Peace in your family. Peace on your job. Peace everywhere you go. I'm decreeing and declaring over your life right now. Woo, hallelujah. Read verse 2, Psalm 127. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so okay. he giveth his beloved sleep. Woo. It is vain for you to rise up early. I got a whole lot of early risers. I know y'all get up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow. Let me break this down for you. Let me break it down. You know, the bread of the world equals the bread of sorrows. Mm, I need you to translate, make yourself some notes so you can understand. To eat the bread of sorrows, to eat all of the bad news and all of the ungodly stuff, he says, you know it's vain. Uh, that bread of sorrow is keeping you up in the morning and late at night. That's what it's saying. Uh, you got to get up early because you got to see what's going on. You get up early to check the news, to be involved in the world. You getting up early, I understand. Late at night, you stand up. You can't rest. You can't sleep. But look what the word says at the end of verse two. He says, for so God given his beloved sleep. Y'all didn't miss that, did you? Read verse, the end of verse two again, please, so y'all can hear that. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. 
Oh, my God. So while they're up worrying about what was reported and they're up late worrying about what was reported and they're eating the bread of sorrow in the meantime, somebody say in the meantime, between time, God gives his beloved sleep. And if you are a born again believer, I believe you're hanging out here because you're a born again believer. And so you are accepted into the beloved. You are his beloved and you need to expect good sleep. How many believers can't seem to get rest? How many believers can't seem to get good sleep? What's going on in your mind? What have you allowed to get in your ear gates and your eye gates that have kept you from getting sleep? And if you're not sleeping, you need to back up and say, what is it that I've been eating the bread of sorrow, which is the bread of this world? But then the Bible says in John 6 and 35 that Jesus is the bread of life. Come on, somebody. And you want to eat the bread of life. You better decide what you're going to eat. Are you going to deal with the bread of sorrow? Or are you going to, oh, my God, I feel like preaching. Let me stop that, y'all. I feel like preaching. Are you going to eat the bread of sorrow? Or are you going to eat the bread of life? Uh, and Jesus clearly said, I am the bread of life. Oh, my God. Thank you for it. He said, not the bread of the world. Not the bread of sorrow. You want to eat the bread of life. And so one of the things we have to do that's going to really help us out in this area. We got to put a guard. We got to put a guard over our eyes and our ears, the eye gate and the ear gate. That's the entrance into a man's heart. And if you can guard the entrance into the man's heart, you can guard your heart. So you choose tonight. And this is where I'm going to end. You choose to feed on the bread of sorrow and you get yourself all filled with frustration and get yourself filled with fear and get yourself filled with all of this panic. Or you can feed on the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. And you can get wisdom, get knowledge, and get unmerited divine faith. I want you to think about that tonight. Peace, my inheritance. Let us pray. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you for everyone that's been able to be a part of this tonight. I thank you for this word. I thank you for every person on the sound of my voice. Let us take peace as our inheritance. Not peace the way the world gives, but your peace, true peace. Thank you that it comes within us, that is on the inside, that we live it out. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, peace you give unto us. We receive it, we take possession. Thank you for our inheritance. Thank you that you didn't leave us empty. You didn't leave us without. I thank you that we can live in peace where someone may see how is it that you're living in peace when the world is chaotic. And that's an opportunity for us to witness. And Father, let us take advantage of these opportunities. As your 13th disciple, let us remember that we're here for your glory. We thank you tonight for every person on the sound of my voice. I bless them now, Father. Bless them. I thank you. I speak peace in their lives, in their homes. I thank you right now over their children. Hallelujah. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, we pray tonight. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.